All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to use this program, this graphing program, and show you something. We'll see how close that we got to this. Now, the graphing program doesn't show you the dotted lines. Oh, by the way, you know what? I forgot to tell you. There's a name for these dotted lines. It's kind of a weird name, but it's called an asymptote. S-M-P-T-O-T-E. How many words do you know that has a P and a T next to each other? It's kind of strange, isn't it? But it, it, I guess you properly say it asymptote with the P in there, but it's hard to say the P and the T together, you know, without a little pause, asympt asymptote. <laughs> it's kind of weird. So usually if you just say it fast, I just say it's an asymptote, okay? All right, that's what it means. What it means is this. It's a line that this, this graph, are you watching? This graph gets closer, and, as this gets closer and closer to 90, this graph gets higher and higher and higher, and it'll never reach this uh, okay. value so right there. Yeah, right. When, yep, exactly. We did the, well, we did the inverse functions, right? We did the inverse functions, and the, it has an asymptote on there. Yeah, so I mean, we've talked about, yeah, we've talked about it a little bit, but that's what those represent, okay? So uh, let's just get rid of that for right now. What I'm going to do now is let's use the program to uh, graph a tangent, and this is what we do in this particular program. This is what? Maybe. If I remember right, I can't remember. So watch what I do. I'm going to put down here on the bottom, I put tangent. Now I think I have to put a little degree symbol here. Again, I'm still trying to learn this program. So watch, I hit tangent of x and, and I hit enter. And look, that's not too bad. It should have it should have been over it. But look, that's right on the dot. You see that graph went right through the dot right there and it went right through the dot right here. That was pretty good estimation, wasn't it, for my points. Now, graphing the line's a little bit tough, but you get the idea. And that's what it does. And it keeps, it continues on and on and on. Do you see it? It mm -hmm. continues to the left, it continues to the right. Because again, you can keep going around the circle as many times as you want. That's what it's representing. But if you look at this, now um, I'm going to have to get all, rid of all that red. But you can kind of see, I just wanted to keep that red in there. Watch, if I continue this dotted line all the way up, this line right here wouldn't even touch it. Um, I tell you what, let me pause this. I'm going to show you, um, oops, where's, I don't want to, oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, let's hit pause. So here we go. Uh, I see, I thought about doing that, but it, see, it doesn't. For some reason, it's not showing up. It's being covered up. I'm not sure why it's being covered up, but it is. All right. So, uh, all right, here we go. Now I've got the tangent on here, and I got rid of all the other junk, so I can play around with it a little bit. Watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go wide, and plus I put these, um, these little uh, grid marks on here to help us see it. Okay. Now, see, it just keeps on going up, 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 up. Now it looks like it might touch eventually, but if I zoom in, see that's this line right here, this dotted line right here, is at 90 degrees, so that's kind of acting as the asymptote. But watch, as I go up, up, up. See how it's getting closer and closer and closer to that 90 degrees? Oh, yeah. All right, see? It's getting closer, isn't it? But, zoom in. all right, zoom in like that. So you can see it's not touching. Yeah, see, it's still not touching. And I could just keep doing this all day and keep zooming in. Now, I'm not going to do that all day. All right, you got the idea already. All right, and let's keep control Z in until it goes back to where it was. <laughs> Come on. There it goes. All right, there we go. Um, so there's your tangent right there. There's the 90 degrees. As you see, this thing gets closer and closer but doesn't hit it, and it gets, watch, there's negative 90, gets closer and closer. And you can see where all the, um, here's 90, goes this way and doesn't touch. All right, here's 270. Remember, those were the, where they're undefined. So every place where it's undefined for tangent, that's where, that's, that's the asymptote. That's where it's not going to touch. So it never touches and crosses over. You actually have to physically pick up your pen and then start again. With the sine and cosine, it's a little different, isn't it? You can just keep, it's just a wave, and it just keeps going on and on and on, and um, you never have to pick up your pen to continue it, all right? It's just a nice continuous function. This is not continuous, it's discontinuous. That's something we'll talk about at some other point. Are we okay with this? Does that make sense on the tangent? All right, let's, um, let's go now back to the sine and cosine. And we're going to change things around a little bit. We'll do what we uh, started talking about yesterday. We'll do the amplitude, change the amplitude, change the period, and all that kind of stuff. All right. All right, here we've got a blank graph again. And what I'm going to do is we're going to graph um, just the cosine. So let's put that in. And I want to show you a comparison between just a regular cosine. So cosine of uh, x 
little degree symbol thingy on there. For some reason, that makes a difference. I'm not sure why, but it does. Okay, there's a regular cosine graph. See, it tops off at 1 because the cosine is 0 is 1. And it goes through 90. We've, we've discussed yeah, that before. Yeah. Right, so I don't need to go through that again. But that's a cosine. Now, what I've done, though, and let's use the marker now. What I've done, that's just y equals the cosine of theta. Remember what our little formula was, our general formula? Oh, I see my timer now. Y equals A, good. And in this one, we're going to do cosine, so B what? Theta. Or you could put X there. Uh, some people put it X instead of theta. You can use it interchangeably. I don't think it makes any difference. So check this out. Watch the A. The A means, what did we say yesterday? It's the amplitude. I'll write the whole word out. Now the B, it doesn't really represent the period, but it definitely has something to do with the period. We just call this the coefficient of the angle. Coefficient. Coefficient. C I E N T. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. No coefficient. -e that's right. I think that's right. Oh, that's right. Looks weird, but it's. I think that's right. So um, that's the coefficient of the angle. So what do we talk about as far as the period? We. This is just review from yesterday. We said the period is equal to what was our little formula? Do you remember that? 360 divided by. Did we talk about that in here? Yeah, it's the coefficient, which is the B. They put absolute value. Just remember, it's just going to always be positive. Find the period of the function. All right, what's the period of the function? Well, on this one, it starts here, and it starts the whole routine again right here, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so that means the period is, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, the period, put P, equals 360 divided by the B. What's the B? That's the number right here, isn't it? What is that? That's a 1. So what's 360 divided by 1? It's 360, so the period of just a regular cosine is 360 degrees. What about the amplitude of a regular cosine? Well, where do you look? You look right here. Where is that on this equation? It's right in front. That's a 1 also. Guess what that means? From the center line, it goes up how high? It goes up to 1. And it goes down the same amount too, doesn't it? All right, but we're talking from the center line up, or the center line down, I guess. That's going to be a 1. All right, so that's pretty easy. But what if you had something like this? What if you had y? Tell you what, let's do this. Let's get rid of. Um, so amplitude is the highest it gets on the. Yeah, it's how high it gets. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go y equals. Um, this is the graph that I already have pre-made in here. For. Uh, now that this computer uses x, we could use theta if you wanted to. Let's just use x just to be a little different. It means the same thing as the theta. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. So what in the world's going on here? What does that change? Does that change how high the thing goes up? No. That just changes the period. Okay, so let's talk about this again. We already did this once for the regular cosine. Let's do it for this one. So the period is 360 divided by b. What's our b in this situation? It's 4. So what's the period of this graph right here? That's 90 degrees, okay? What does that mean? Look, the period of this graph goes from here all the way to here, 360 degrees. You with me? Yeah. What's the period of this graph going to be, though? Nine. It's going to go from 0 to where? Nine. To 90 right here, all right? So it's going to do that one full rotation. It's going to do all that stuff within this little period of time. So it'll be All right. Much smaller it will be okay. Right. It won't be as wavy, as gentle of a wave. It'll be a lot steeper. Now look at the 360. Let's compare it, and that's that's the key point that you want to be able to graph it because we're trying to graph this thing right here. Look at the uh, look at the regular cosine curve. It goes from here to here. That's 360. Where did it bottom out 180. at 180? Halfway, right? Half of 360. Half of the period. You see it? Now. That's right. Well, half 90, which is 45, yeah. right? So look, where is this one going to bottom out? 45, and so it's going to hit negative 1 right here at 45 degrees instead of 180. Do you see that? Yeah. All right, because it's half of this. Now, where did it hit the zero on the regular cosine? A quarter of the whole thing. Or you can think, I like to think of it this, half of the half. So from here to here is halfway, that's 180. Where is it going to hit the zero? Mm -hmm. Halfway at 90. What about this one? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going from zero to 45, so what's half of that? 22 and a half. So where's 22 and a half? somewhere around here. And that's where it hits zero, doesn't it? Right. Okay, it's, now I'm eyeballing it, but it's probably around there somewhere. Maybe even a little closer to the 30. Okay? What about this one? What about from here to here? Where's it going to be? Well, it's going to be halfway between 45 and 90. So what's that? Half 97.5. 90 plus, is that what it is? 67.5? Okay. 
So 67.5 would be around in here somewhere. Now, look what your graph's going to look like. It's going to start here. I'll just do a little bit of beginning of it. And then it's going to come down. This one's a little harder to draw. And then it's going to come down like this, up like that. Do you see what it's doing? Right. And then it's going to start again, isn't it? Look, how many of these things within the original 360 degrees do you think? Four. Four of them, that's right. See what that four is right there? That tells you how many rotations, how many of these things are you going to have within that 360 degrees. All right, we're going to go to the next um What's that big We're going to go to the next what thing. It's it just the cosine. It's just the regular cosine. Can you type it in there so we have to Yeah, we're going to we're going to see it at, in the next uh presentation. Uh-oh. Am I on this? Um, how would you grab